I have known this incredible woman for over a decade now. True. Right? When we True. were back at Pulse. Back at Pulse. And you walked Pulsing. in and the whole room changed with the dynamic that sh this woman brings. Uh, mortgage banker. Yep. Um, she's been doing it for 23 Three. years. Um, True. But she has a background. She has a life. And it's been several years since you've had an opportunity to present to us in any format. True because of what she had mentioned earlier, her former employer uh, felt that it was inappropriate to market in the ways that we all do for who knows why. But that's in the past. We have a present and a future to look forward to, and I'm so happy about it. We're gonna learn more about it. But by way of background, just because it's been so long and we've had several new members come in, I wanna make sure that people understand a little bit about the woman that you are. Born in Jackson, Mississippi. That's right. right? Um, we won't discuss the year. I, I don't know I why. Say. We won't discuss the year. You're, you're, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. You got nothing Thank to worry you. about in that category. Uh, we were pioneer founding families of the state. We were. That's incredible. Yeah. You have an older brother named Rob and a younger sister, Libba, short for Elizabeth. Right. I have eight nieces, not I, she yes. has eight nieces and nephews and seven great nieces and nephews. True. Um, in her opinion, all ex exceptional. Uh, her parents are now part of the Heavenly Choir. Up there. But they are looking down on you and super, Absolutely. super proud. Uh, she was a music major, undergraduate from UT Austin, uh, and graduate from Eastman Conservatory. Yes. Um, she moved to New York City, Park Slope specifically, in Brooklyn, in 1998 um, from Philadelphia. And she now lives on the Upper West Side. True. 80, All 80, true. 81st in Columbus. And she loves her little dog, Ginny. Ginny Martini. My so. favorite dream. <laughs> AA, here I come. <laughs> I made me my dog for my drink. <laughs> so with that, yes. we're going to start with your first question, if okay. I may. All right. How does an opera singer decide to live her life in New York and become a mortgage specialist? Good one, Jay. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny because, um, well, of course, New York, I came to New York because of music and singing. And, you know, a long way, because being raised in Mississippi, when you think the furthest part of the world is, the Ni if Ni is Niagara Falls, <laughs> that's how limited my vision was back then. Um, it took a lot of steps to get to New York. I went from... Jackson, Mississippi, to Cleveland, Mississippi, to Austin, Texas. Uh, my first foray in the north, I went to Rochester, New York. That was a big culture shock. I was sick for three months because I did not even know how to, I was wearing patent leather shoes in 15 inches of snow. I had no idea what to do with the weather. And then I went, came down to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, then to New York. So that's how I got here. But um, the truth is it started with singing, and then all of a sudden I just said, you know, someday, I didn't think I was going to live to 40. When my teacher in elementary school said, what do you want to do when you're 40? I said, I hope I'm alive, because it just seems so far away. But I did hit 40, thank God. And I said, you know what, I need to make a, li I need to make a real consistent living. I was fortunate enough to be able to sing solos and classical and with orchestras, but it wasn't consistent enough to realize that I have to fund my retirement. So the long story short is, uh, it just fell into my lap. Someone walked into where I was working and said, uh, do you know anybody who wants to be in the mortgage business? And I thought, well, I can do that. I can do anything. Okay, let's do it. So th that day, this man interviewed me, and his name is Darren Fink. I love him to death. And that day is the day that I got hired, and that is the day that my life changed. So how it all ties together is when I was studying music, music is very nuanced, especially classical music and especially classical singing. It is so nuanced and so in the weeds driven. You know, when you sing, it's not the notes, everybody. It's what's between the notes. It's the thread. If I'm saying I love you in a song, the words I love you are very important. But what happens is between that I, the love, and you, there's an energy. And it's that nuance, that studying of the words, that drilling down is what has translated into my career as a mortgage banker and mortgage now originator or broker 
It is the love for guidelines. It is the drilling down. It's finding the space between the words that is what has made me thrive in this industry. Where's Darren Fink today? Darren Fink is still working in my foreign. We followed each other. I, went, yeah. we, I was at Chase for 10 years with Darren. Then we both jumped the stage coach together. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to start the Manhattan branch of Cross Country Mortgage with me. So let's see what happens. Bring him into our room. I'd love to meet him. He's the best. That's He's the very best. Nice. All right. So with uh, regard to your professional uh, responsibilities and all that you do on a daily basis, right. I'm sure you have one great professional achievement that you'd like to share with us today. Anything come to mind? Immediately. Oh. My great achievement yes. is not singular. Okay. It's 23 years of getting people into homes, making dreams come true for people. People come to me with their dream of home ownership, and I join that dream. I am... It, I, people are not transactions to me. I am a dream maker. And when they come to me with that dream of home ownership, I join them hand in hand and we get to the end. It may not be the best ride. It may come with some hair, lots of hair. But I'm telling you, I don't abandon ship and I never lose sight of people's dreams. So that is my true great achievement. That's a great answer. Well, it's the truth. I love it. Thank you. Well, you are now starting and embarking on this new endeavor. That's right. Uh, with, a, with, a, with a new bank, and it hasn't been all that long, and I think that there's a lot to learn, at least at this moment of time, what you're able to do now with Cross Country Mortgage that you may not have been able to do previously. That's right. For us, your clients, and so on. So at Cross Country Mortgage, it's a, what's known as a correspondent lending. So they have their whole array of products, just like banks. The standard vanilla products. Good old 30-year fix, 15-year fix, W-2 employees, bring it all day long. The funnel works. I've never seen anything like how the loan comes in and how the, just the process gets taken. That's the difference between working in a bank and a mortgage brokerage company where all they do is mortgages. The funnel takes it and go and the players come in. This experience is seamless. I've just been blown away by it. But um, so what was the question? Sorry, the, my the brain. products that you're oh, able to now so offer your clients. Here's what's really control. thrilling. So I have everything that I could. I can do everything that I used to be able to do for 23 years. But I brought a sheet of example of things that are these products are specific to cross country mortgage. These are not brokered out products. These are our products. But look at all the other things that I can do. I used to find myself saying no to all these opportunities. And now the answer is yes. All of these signature products are for people who basically don't show income. Um, these are people who are self-employed that uh, are 1099. We can actually use their 1099s before all the tax deductions. So when I was at a bank, the tax deductions would come in. I would, people would make a million dollars. They would write it down to $60,000. And I would have to say, sorry, I can't help you. There are one, two, three, four, five products right here that are specific to us for self-employed people, people who want to buy investment properties, no income verification, asset statement programs. I could go on and on, but I brought this just for you to give you a flavor of it. There's also all these products like bridge loans. I used to always have to say no to bridge loans. We have them. We have them when you're in contract to buy and to sell. We have them if you want to buy and your home is not listed for sale, we can do a mortgage on that new property as a bridge loan, and then you list your house and sell and pay that loan off. We, have, we can do HDFC loans. That's, those are co-ops with income and asset restrictions. I used to have to say no to those programs. I can say yes now. So it's just opened up 196 other products that special investors are willing to do and buy from us. Or, or in this case, we will hold on our portfolio. It's, just, it's opened up a world. And here's the thing, everybody. You have to be able to pivot. Banking served me. It doesn't serve clients anymore. This world is where all people are being served. And that's what I find exciting about this opportunity and why I was so willing to jump on it and make the shift at, at, at this point in my career. That's awesome to know. Yeah. I love it. So you've always uh, been very open with us, usually right. at the beginning of the year. Right. You're a goal-oriented person. You're very focused on achieving certain levels. Um, and I haven't heard that yet this year from you. So my next question for you is, you've shared your goals with the group in the past. Right. Never have we had so many real estate agents and real estate-related professionals in the group. What do you hope to achieve this year as a result of your relationships within the group and or generally? 
Well, that's very sweet. So, um, you know, obviously, I want to be a trusted source to you all. Um, you know, everybody has their own style of what they like and don't like. I mean, I have a typical way of I, I communicate through a process. If you want more, I want to hear about it. If you want different, I want to hear about it because I want to be your trusted source and I want there to be open communication so that I can help your buyers achieve their dreams. And in doing so, hopefully shine a spotlight on all of you who refer to me that people will be grateful for the, for the connection. And they, they will always remember you as the one that introduced you to me that got them into their home. And I think that I would like just to continue to meet with all of you and continue to tell you more about all these opportunities so that you can know when you're out there talking to your friends and your colleagues, what are the things that I'm looking for? My goal is to, um, I'd like to close in this year, in this new bank, in this environment, I'd like to close $100 million. Whoa. So that's always my target. Wow. It went up. It's, it's always have, my target. I have $60 million in my head for some reason. Well, that was, that was one year. But no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm all in on this. I wow. want $100 million, everybody. So please, we can keep your it. ears and eyes open. Let's help yeah. you get there. All right. Well, as your parents look down on you, yes. what do you think they are most proud of? Oh, God, you're going to make me cry. Yeah. What I'm here to do. <laughs> um... It's not they're proud of me. You have a lot to be proud of. I did it, y'all. I escaped Mississippi and uh, <laughs> came to, I escaped. <laughs> I came to New York. I made it in New York. I'm Frank Sinatra. If I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. And I just hope they're proud. And I hope that I am a reflection of how beautiful they were. Well, that's unbelievable. Ooh. Love it. I wouldn't expect him to cry, Jay. No, I know. I'm getting better at this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're the first was one. That the was that the first one that you may cry yeah, today? I think okay. So. I think so. Yeah. But we got them laughing now as well. Oh, good. So Thank that's you. good. Enjoy the laugh. So I'm going to recycle one that's, I think, been interesting for most of the interviewees. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Oh, gosh, doing the same and more and better and bigger and louder. <laughs> yeah. Really? Is Can it possible? Bigger, louder? bigger and louder? Oh, it is possible, it. and I plan to be that person in 10 years. All right. The last one before I release you from the hot seat. Oh, I've, on I've this had a great beautiful time. day of love on love day. Yes, right? tell me, tell me, yes. What are some words of wisdom oh. that you live by that you'd like to share with the rest of us? My words of wisdom are like my business card with this heart. I really hope that all of us in our life, because is, I've quoted this many times in this room, it's what Maya Angelou says, it's not what you do, it's not anything like that, it's just how you make people feel. And I really hope for all of you in your business and your personal life that you really keep that in mind, because you never know in your passing what you are putting into people and giving to people that they're going to remember. And I really hope that everyone lives their life as my, my mission statement is, to spread more love into this world, to awaken and spread more love into this world. And I hope that all of you on this love day, with my pen on you, it will be a reminder to please always step into love, spread it, time is short, it really makes an impact, and it really can change the course of your life and everyone's life around you. I want you to pay particular attention to the energy between these words. Okay. I love you. Aww. Thank you, Miss John, baby. <laughs> <laughs>